Hey, my name's Luke. Today we're going to talk about tin foiling and heat shrinking metal. So, I have a 54, 53 Bel Air and I've been working on it for a while. And doing body work on it, you, you find issues when you're laying Bondo and stuff like that or you're sanding on it and uh, the metal caves in on you. So what you have to do is you have to heat shrink the metal. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, apply heat to it. We're going to hammer it down, dolly it down and then we'll apply a cold rag and that causes the metal what happens is when you heat it the metal expands as we hammer and, it, and it'll naturally bubble up right so it'll, it'll uh, create like a like a spoon and if you just apply water to it which is what what I started doing when I started doing this and uh, you would apply water to it or a wet rag it sure it shrinks and it pulls the metal rounded in but but the issue you have is you have all these uh, bumps everywhere and you end up having to hammer it in. So the best thing I found to do and the reason I'm making this video is When you heat up the metal right you get it glowing red you take away your heat you need to dolly it down just a little bit and uh, Just to get it nice and flat. So when you apply that cold rag It'll pull the metal in around it and it'll be nice and flat like you never did anything except for What you want so I don't want to go around and have to hammer everything in and apply bondo to everything so this is my first first frame off restoration and it is a pain but I wanted to post this video to help you guys out and you learn from my mistakes so if we look at the hood what is tin foiling or, or whatever they call it and uh, I'll, I'll show it to you see if you can see it so as we apply pressure to the hood you can hear it pop and cave in right so the issue is, is that when I'm sanding over this the metal pushes in and it creates waves on its own. I started to apply Bondo to it and sand it down. The hood is the worst place to put Bondo. You, you don't want to do it because it's constantly flexing. The hood and the doors are constantly going to flex and it is, uh, it's going to crack over time. So you're going to put all this paint on it, you're going to spend all this time painting it and uh, it's just going to crack and peel off and, and you wasted your time. So you want as little filler as possible. Alright, so we're going to talk about that. So we're going to heat this from the underside. So I'll push on the hood from, from the other side as I lift the hood up. I'll push on it, right? And I'll see where it comes in on the other side. And I'll heat it up. Immediately while it's still hot, I'll pull up my hammer and dolly. And I'll hammer it down just a little bit. And then I'll apply a cold wet rag. Alright, so let me show you. Let's see if you can see this. Bear with me, guys. You probably can't see it. But, just follow along with me. So, I look on the underside, I see where I can push the metal in, right? And I take my heat gun. Whatever you use, you can use a propane torch. If you have a settling torch, great. We use what we got. And all I'm going to do is heat it till it's glowing red. Alright, I remove the heat, take my hammer and dolly, come to the other side of it, find out where it is, and I just gently tap it. Much just let the hammer fall when I do it. I'm not here trying to uh, beat it into place. Take my wet rag, apply over it, rotate the rag, all right, and let it cool down. All right, so I lost you guys on that last one. I looked at I looked at the camera and it said there's not enough space. So. Talk about these other places, right? I found all these other spots in here, and I, and I see you guys can see them on the camera. So this is the this is the area I started on, right? I started started uh, heat shrinking after after I YouTube some stuff, and and it, and it looks simple, you know. So I started there, and it just ended up a wavy mess. There's bumps everywhere. It's just ridiculous, right? So I pretty much gave up on the heat shrinking thing. And uh, again, this is the reason I'm doing the video is because uh, learn from my mistakes, you know. 
So as I went through the rest of the car, I uh, I perfected the craft as good as you can, you know, for a do-it-yourself. Or this is, I'm not a body guy at all, but uh, I'm not paying somebody ten thousand dollars to paint my car. Uh, so I tighten this up, tighten this up a lot. I see like uh, one or two small areas that I'll that I'll heat. You know, um, what you want to do is heat the bigger areas first, right? So if I if I go through my hood or a body panel or something like that, right? And I, and I push on it and I see that there's a small area, there's a big area. I want to focus on that big area first, right? So, uh, focus on the big areas first because they might pull in that small area and it might not be a problem at all, you know? So do that. Um, I'll post some other videos on, uh, on mechanical stuff. I'm a, I'm a mechanic by trade and, uh, and I'm good at that. We'll talk about freeing up old engines, you know, uh, engines that have been sitting for a long time. Maybe they ran good 10 years ago, and you pulled them, but now they're froze. Uh, we can do stuff like that. We'll do some transmission rebuilds. We'll do uh, pretty much any of the mechanical stuff. I'll, I'll teach you guys how to do it yourself. Uh, this stuff's getting expensive. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not in there paying other people to do some work I can do by myself. Most of it's pretty straightforward and simple. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cover pretty much everything on this car, and I have a, I have a Chevelle that uh, my wife's not excited I bought, so we'll, we'll do that one too. But, uh, yeah, just take your time, and uh, hope you guys enjoy my other videos. Alright, so as I was doing the hood, I, uh, I can feel the fender flexing as I uh, lean into it, right? Hopefully you can see this. I thought maybe I would uh, redo this video or add to it. Is that way you can actually uh, see what's going on? Let's see if that helps. All right, so you can probably hear it, right? So the key is we need to be able to get to the back side, right? So I'm gonna find the worst spot, which feels like it's right in here. And although I got away with sanding this already, I need to. Uh, fix this for the future. So we get our gun nice and hot. Right, so we want to get in and get out. And make a small circle, small circle, blown red. <coughs> I get to the back side of this. And again, I'm just lightly tapping. hitting your uh, dolly from behind. Now if I'm not able to get to the back side of this panel, this, this it's not going to work. Right, so I tighten it up. I can feel it tighten around it. Right, so it went from a, from a dime sized piece to a 50 cent piece, right? So that's, that's all metal, or all uh, thicker metal now. Alright, so we slide in between these two spots I already did. And this should pull the rest tight. We might have to do it once or twice, or uh, I notice triangles help. Alright, because then we cover a bigger area. Small circle. I don't want to get it too hot. I get it too hot and I end up burning through it. I know it's as flat as possible. I don't want to go much more than that because then I'm stretching the metal. Right? When I hammer on a piece of uh, when I hammer a piece a piece of metal that's solid on the back side, what am I doing? I'm pushing, pushing the metal away from where I'm hitting. Naturally. I mean that's the only place it can go, right? Nice. Nice. This actually feels pretty solid between my triangle. I'll move over here, I can still hear it popping. So I think I'll go one low and one high. It's cherry, I get out.
hear that ting when you're hitting your dolly on the other side, stop the camera. Again, that's the high spot I talked about. So I did one low, I did one high. We should be good. Red, we're out. I keep wiping off my dolly. Because whatever coating is on the underside of this, Right, whether it's old burnt um, undercoat or somebody probably sprayed, uh, sprayed uh, epoxy primer on it, uh, it's gonna end up sticking to my dolly, and I want my dolly as fun as possible. Beautiful. I have a spot right here I could do, but you see the difference? hammer this down a little bit. I feel that I didn't uh, I didn't hammer it down enough when I dollied it. So I'll just have to tap in on those spots, those high spots, but very little. what I'm looking at. Okay, so what I'm looking at, right, I heated up these spots. I started here, right, and I started my triangle because I could feel it flex in between. So I did here, I did here, again I had flex up here, so that's my triangle, completed the triangle. Nice. Now I still had some flex over here. So I went one low and one high, just because that's where it felt like it was coming from, right? Good. Now I felt a little bit up here. This was just an added, uh, added spot. So looks good. These three spots, they're perfectly flat. Uh, again, this one has a little high spot on it, right on the outside, right here. And I can I can fix that. It's no big deal. But um, the last thing you want to do is have a bondoed car. But what do you do? It's it's 50 years old. There used to be a metal strip that went down the side of it, um, blocking all that off, taking all that away. So I don't want any of the uh, chrome that was on it, except for the belt line. So the belt line gives me a separation for my body paint. I'll do a 57 Chevy teal on the bottom, and then a beautiful white top on the uh, on the top. So we'll do those in later later videos. But all right, guys, good luck.